Ah, the roller coaster. These gravity-defying throw machines are a staple of popular culture. Having made their way into TV shows, movies, nostalgic computer games, some other computer games, and the hearts of parkgoers around the world. But where did they get their start? How did they come to be the heart-stopping, multi-million dollar throw machines that they are today? The journey is a long and interesting one. So long that it couldn't be contained in one video. I'm Jay Natty Boy, and this is part one of my series on roller coaster history. While the English term for a roller coaster does not directly allude to the ride's origin, many of the Romance languages' term for roller coaster do. I fondly remember the moment in my sixth grade Italian class when my teacher was unable to explain why the Italian word for roller coasters, Montagne Russe, translated to Russian mountains, leading to the first and only time I was able to use my theme park knowledge in the classroom. During the 16th century, Russian citizens decided to spice up their bleak winters with a new form of entertainment, sledding down large wooden ramps coated in a thick layer of ice. The concept seemed simple enough, and it was but Russian ice slides proved to be very popular. However, they had one glaring issue. They could only be enjoyed during the colder months of the year, which, to be fair, is most of the time in Russia. Originally an activity enjoyed primarily by the lower classes, the ice slides soon attracted royal attention. Along came Catherine the Great. She ruled over Russia from 1762 to 1796, after she organized a coup to overthrow Peter III, her husband. She grew fond of the ice slides, but wanted to enjoy them during the summer as well as the frigid parts of the year. In an ingenious move, she replaced the runners on her sleds with wheels, and the world would never be the same. The French soon caught wind of this thrilling contraption, and decided to try it out for themselves. As the climate in France was less suited to ice slides, the French originally outfitted their ramps with rollers, upon which standard sleds would, you guessed it, coast, thus coining the term roller coaster. The idea today seems absurd, and it was. These roller ramps were abandoned in favor of grooved wooden ramps, where sleds with wheels were employed. The early 1800s in France saw the construction of two famous early coasters employing this new construction technique. Les Montagnes Russes à Belleville, or the Belleville Mountains, was constructed in Paris in 1812. And this coaster, which I will not try to pronounce, is another well-known coaster constructed during this time. With cars affixed to the track and guide rails to keep them on course, these French creations had higher speeds and greater thrills than anything seen before, and set the foundation for the roller coaster we know of today. While the French were having fun with their wheeled sleds, thrill riding was beginning to emerge in a different form across the pond in America. In 1827, an 18-mile long incline railway named the Mock Chunk Railway opened in eastern Pennsylvania. Originally used to transport coal, the owner saw another, potentially more profitable use for it come the mid-1800s, when certain train cars were set aside for paying customers. The railroad cars were hauled by a steam engine to the top of the mountain before coasting back down. By the mid-1870s, a nearby tunnel was completed that allowed the coal to be transported in a more traditional manner, and the Mock Chunk Scenic Railway was transformed into a designated tourist attraction, complete with a restaurant, hotel, and various activities for the thrill-seeking public to enjoy. While the Mock Chunk Scenic Railway proved that Americans had a thirst for gravity-driven thrills, it was not specifically built for amusement, so many do not classify it as the first true modern roller coaster. In 1884, an attraction called the Gravity Pleasure Switchback Railway opened in Coney Island, New York, and became an instant success. This creation featured undulating hills, bench-like cars, a soul-crushing top speed of 6 miles per hour, and is considered to be the first modern roller coaster designed for amusement in America. It was invented by Lamarcus Adna Thompson, aka L.A. Thompson, who grew to become a legend in the coaster industry. He was supposedly inspired by the Mock Chunk Railway, and desired to build a ride that would offer similar thrills and profits, but with a smaller footprint. The Switchback Railway was incredibly successful, but also had some features that could use upgrading. For one, passengers had to climb up to the top of a platform before boarding the train. Then, after traversing the 600 foot long track, the car would have to be pushed up to a second tower and switched to the second track before making the return trip. Sometimes the passengers were even expected to help push the train, 
Imagine that. Despite the ride's simplicity, it was insanely popular, and ignited a firestorm of coaster building. Within a year of the premiere of L.A. Thompson's Switchback Railway, Charles Alcoke debuted the Serpentine Railway, a ride that was constructed in a continuous loop without the need for track switching, which I would love to praise as a great idea, but let's be honest, it's such an obvious next step that I wonder why L.A. just didn't make his railway travel in a circle to begin with. In 1885, Philip Hinkle built the Gravity Pleasure Road, which became the first full-circuit roller coaster with a chain lift, and the most popular ride at Coney Island, probably because people didn't have to manually push their car up to the top of the hill. At the dawn of the 20th century, roller coasters began popping up all over America, but L.A. Thompson wasn't about to be upstaged. In 1886, he built the first scenic railway. These coasters had a heavy emphasis on theming, with Thompson often constructing painted tableaus for the cars to pass through, dazzling electric light displays, and other indoor special effects. The resounding success of this ride led to the creation of the L.A. Thompson Scenic Railway Company, which installed scenic railways across the globe. Only one of L.A.'s scenic railways stands today, Oishabane in at Tivoli Gardens in Denmark, built in 1914. As America entered the 1900s, coaster builders began to get more and more bold with their coaster designs as the public's lust for thrills grew more intense. A looping roller coaster named the Flip Flap was built by 1900 at Coney Island. However, it was not very successful for obvious reasons. I mean, look how sketchy this thing is. Just like all other coasters built during this period, the Flip Flap's cars only had wheels located above the track, so the only thing keeping the car on course during the loop was good old centrifugal force. Oh, and lap bars weren't a thing yet either, so centrifugal force was the only thing keeping riders in the car as well. Riders would often suffer whiplash due to the completely circular loop, and the single two-passenger car did not make the ride very profitable due to its low throughput. A more successful coaster design from the early 1900s was the figure eight coaster, where cars would run freely on a multi-level track, complete with wooden guide rails to the side of the track to keep the cars on course. Leap the Dips, constructed at Altoona, Pennsylvania's Lake Mont Park in 1902, is the only surviving example of the figure eight style coaster and the oldest currently operating coaster in the world. While these figure eight style coasters were a massive step up and thrill from L.A. Thompson's original switchback railway contraption, they featured gentle dips as the cars were not locked onto the track in any way. After all, those who have played Roller Coaster Tycoon know what happens when you take a hill too quickly on a side friction coaster. Some coasters even employed a brake operator to control the speed of the cars as they crested the hills, something Tivoli Gardens still does today on Oishabainen. A few daring designers built so-called high-speed coasters during this time, including Coney Island's Drop the Dip in 1907, and the Thriller at Rockaway Beach, Long Island, which featured steeper, deeper drops despite their side friction design. But most coasters featured mild dips, even if designers were getting more and more ambitious with their scale, seen here with Chase Through the Clouds at Pennsylvania's Willow Grove Park. Much of the early 20th century coasters are lost replaced by parks in later years for newer and more thrilling coasters that benefited from advancements in ride engineering. Only three coasters survived from this era, the previously mentioned Leap the Dips at Lake Mont Park, Oishabainen at Tivoli Gardens, as well as Scenic Railway, located at Luna Park in Melbourne, Australia. Built in 1912, Scenic Railway employs a brake operator, just like Oishabainen, to keep the train speed in check. In the next episode, we'll explore how the eventual economic boom and critical developments in coaster engineering caused park owners to scramble to build the latest, greatest, and wildest coasters they could. In the golden age of roller coasters, coasters would begin to get much, much, much wilder. If you made it to the end of this video, be sure to leave a like, it would really help support and grow my channel, and consider hitting the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this one. Until next time, thanks for watching.